you ever pondered about Xerxes the Great, often hailed as the god king of Persia? Many envision him as depicted in the film, 300, but it's crucial to remember that the physical attributes of historical figures from antiquity are often speculative due to the lack of contemporary images or detailed descriptions. This is true for Xerxes the Great, the sovereign of the Achaemenid Empire during the 5th century BCE. Based on general information about individuals from his era and region, we can infer that Xerxes, being of Persian descent, likely had features common among Indo-European peoples. These could include black or brown hair, brown eyes, and skin tones ranging from fair to olive. However, given the vast size and diverse population of the Persian Empire, there would have been considerable diversity in physical appearance. As a king, Xerxes would have been impeccably groomed and adorned with lavish clothing and accessories befitting his royal status. Ancient Persian kings were renowned for their luxurious attire and the use of power symbols such as crowns, diadems, and royal robes. But what about Xerxes' height, build, or facial features? Unfortunately, historical records or texts do not provide specific details. Most of our knowledge about Xerxes comes from ancient Greek sources, as he was a significant figure during the Greco-Persian Wars, particularly during the invasion of Greece. These Greek sources focused more on his actions and military campaigns than on his physical appearance. So, while we can make some general assumptions about Xerxes' likely appearance based on the historical context of his time and region, we have no concrete physical descriptions or depictions of him to provide a more detailed picture of his bodily attributes. Today, we focus more on his actions and campaigns. But who was Xerxes I? He was a name that once instilled fear in both his subjects and his adversaries. He ascended to the throne of the vast Achaemenid Empire in 486 BCE, following in the footsteps of his father, Darius I. Yet, Xerxes had ambitions that dwarfed even his father's achievements. He yearned to conquer Greece, a land of formidable warriors and defiant city-states, to fulfill his divine mission. He's referred to as the God-King due to his belief in his divine right to rule. He saw himself as the earthly representative of the god Ahura Mazda, which added a divine aspect to his kingship. But what was his rule like? Xerxes' rule, which extended from 486 to 465 BCE, was marked by several defining themes and characteristics, many of which left an enduring impact on the Achaemenid Empire and the ancient world. Foremost among these themes was Xerxes' unwavering belief in his divine authority. He firmly saw himself as the chosen representative of Ahura Mazda, the supreme deity of Zoroastrianism. This belief was not just symbolic, it was deeply embedded in his governance. A concrete example is his insistence on elaborate rituals and ceremonies that reinforced his divine status. He constructed the grand city of Persepolis, a testament to his divine mission. Within its opulent palaces and intricately carved reliefs, one can find depictions of Xerxes receiving divine blessings, offering sacrifices to the gods, and symbolically bridging the gap between heaven and earth. The grandeur and ambition of Xerxes' reign were equally striking. His relentless pursuit of monumental construction projects showcased this ambition. Evidence lies in the colossal structures that still stand today, such as the Gate of All Nations at Persepolis. This imposing gateway, adorned with majestic sculptures and inscriptions in multiple languages, served as a symbol of Xerxes' authority and his vision of a united empire under Persian rule. Xerxes' military ambition was another defining characteristic of his reign. His belief in the divine duty to spread the influence of Ahura Mazda led him to embark on the ill-fated invasion of Greece in 480 BCE. Concrete evidence of his military ambition lies in the massive army he assembled, which Herodotus estimated at over a million soldiers. This campaign, although initially successful with the capture and burning of Athens, ultimately culminated in the battles of Thermopylae, Salamis, Plataea, and Mycale. These pivotal events, recorded by historians, highlight the high stakes of Xerxes' military conquests and the complex interplay between his divine ambitions and the resilience of Greek city-states. Furthermore, Xerxes' reign witnessed the Persian Empire reaching its territorial zenith, encompassing vast regions stretching from Egypt to India. This multicultural empire brought together diverse cultures and peoples. An example of this multicultural aspect is evident in the inscriptions at Persepolis, which were inscribed in multiple languages, reflecting the linguistic diversity of the empire. What was Xerxes' family background, and how did he come to the throne? Xerxes' family background was deeply rooted in the Achaemenid dynasty, which ruled the Persian Empire. He was the son of King Darius I and Queen Atossa, making him part of a long line of Persian monarchs. 
Xerxes' ascension to the throne was not without its complexities. When Darius I died in 486 BC, there was a succession dispute, and Xerxes' older half-brother, Artabazin, initially claimed the throne. However, with the support of influential nobles and the endorsement of his mother, Atossa, Xerxes eventually secured his position as the rightful heir and became king of Persia. That's quite a political maneuvering for the throne, isn't it? How did Xerxes' upbringing and education influence his reign? Xerxes' upbringing and education played a significant role in shaping his reign. Growing up in the royal court, he was exposed to the intricacies of Persian court politics and administration from an early age. His mother, Queen Atossa, was a powerful figure in the court and likely influenced his early education. He would have been educated in Persian traditions, customs, and the Zoroastrian religion, which played a central role in the Achaemenid Empire. Did his education also involve military training, considering his later military campaign? Yes, indeed. Xerxes received a well-rounded education, which likely included military training. The Persian king was expected to be a capable military leader, and Xerxes' military education would have prepared him for his role as the commander-in-chief of the Persian army. This training would prove invaluable when he embarked on his ambitious military campaigns, including the invasion of Greece. It seems like his family background and upbringing provided him with a solid foundation for leadership. How did these early experiences influence his role as king of Persia? Xerxes' family background and upbringing instilled in him a strong sense of royal duty and the belief in his divine right to rule. His early exposure to court politics and administration equipped him with the skills needed to govern a vast empire. Additionally, his education, which encompassed Persian traditions and military training, allowed him to assert his authority both within the empire and on the battlefield. These formative experiences influenced his reign as he navigated the complexities of governance, military conquests, and his role as the god-king of Persia. What were Xerxes' beliefs regarding his divine mandate to rule? Xerxes held strong beliefs in his divine mandate to rule. Rooted in the religious framework of Zoroastrianism, he saw himself as the earthly representative of Ahura Mazda, the supreme deity in Zoroastrianism, and believed that he had been chosen by Ahura Mazda to carry out his divine will on earth. This belief imbued Xerxes with a sense of divine authority that went beyond mere political power. He genuinely considered himself a divine figure, a living god-king whose rule was a manifestation of divine will. How did his belief in divine authority shape his actions and policies? Xerxes' belief in divine authority had a profound influence on his actions and policies as a ruler. It was a driving force behind his grand construction projects, such as the city of Persepolis, which served as a monumental testament to his divine mission. These projects aimed to establish the king's connection with the divine and solidify his authority over the empire. Additionally, his divine conviction played a central role in his military campaigns. Xerxes believed that his military conquests were not just territorial expansion but also a divine duty to spread the influence of Ahura Mazda. His invasion of Greece in 480 BC was a direct result of this belief, as he saw it as a means to fulfill his divine mission. His religious beliefs also shaped his policies and governance. Xerxes promoted the worship of Ahura Mazda as the supreme god, emphasizing the central role of Zoroastrianism in the empire. This policy aimed to unify the diverse peoples of the empire under a common religious framework, further solidifying his divine authority. In essence, Xerxes' belief in divine authority was not just a personal conviction, it was a driving ideological force that permeated all aspects of his rule, from monumental construction to military campaigns and religious policies. It molded him into a ruler who saw himself as a god-king with a divine mission to fulfill on earth. How did the Battle of Thermopylae and the Battle of Salamis impact Xerxes' Greek campaign? The Battle of Thermopylae and the Battle of Salamis were pivotal moments in Xerxes' Greek campaign, and their impact was profound. Let's start with the Battle of Thermopylae. In 480 BC, a small force of Greek warriors, led by King Leonidas of Sparta, valiantly defended the narrow pass at Thermopylae against the massive Persian army. Xerxes, confident in his divine mission and the sheer size of his forces, was initially taken aback by the Greek resistance. The battle became a symbol of Greek defiance and valor. Despite the overwhelming odds, the Greeks held their ground, inflicting significant losses on the Persian forces. The turning point came when a local resident, Ephialtes, betrayed the Greeks by revealing a mountain path that allowed the Persians to outflank and encircle them. Leonidas and his Spartans fought to the death in a heroic last stand but the Greeks were ultimately defeated.
the Battle of Thermopylae showcased the Greeks' determination and demonstrated to Xerxes that his campaign would not be without challenges. Now, the Battle of Salamis, a naval engagement, had equally profound consequences. After the fall of Thermopylae and the retreat of the Greek allies, Xerxes pressed further into Greece, capturing Athens. The Persians went on to burn the city's iconic temples and libraries, symbolizing their dominance. However, this brutal act galvanized the Greeks' resolve to resist the invaders. The turning point in the Greek campaign came after the Battle of Salamis. The defeat of the Persian navy crippled Xerxes' logistical support and forced him to reconsider his position. Fearing a potential revolt in his empire, he decided to return to Persia, leaving his general Mardonius in charge of the remaining forces in Greece. Xerxes' retreat from Greece marked a strategic shift. It allowed the Greek city-states, led by Athens and Sparta, to regroup and unite against Mardonius. The final confrontation took place at the Battle of Plataea in 479 BC, where the Greeks, in a ferocious clash, decisively defeated the Persian forces, putting an end to Xerxes' dream of conquest. The consequences of Xerxes' Greek campaign were profound. While it highlighted the resilience of Greek city-states in the face of overwhelming odds, it also exposed the limitations of Xerxes' divine ambition. His retreat marked the beginning of the decline of Persian influence in Greece. So, what are your thoughts on Xerxes' reign and his military campaigns? Do you think his belief in his divine right to rule influenced his decisions and actions? And how do you think his legacy has shaped our understanding of the Achaemenid Empire and ancient history? I'd love to hear your thoughts.